What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to Fix It Garage and another awesome video. Today, we are bringing back that blue Kia Stinger that we worked, in, worked on a while ago. Last time we worked on it, we did a JB4 install and some intakes. But that was just the start of the project on the Kia Stinger. For today, the goal is we're gonna try to install some larger ducting for the intakes that sit in the front bumper that will allow more air to go into the intakes. Also, they glow in the dark, which is really neat. You guys will see that later. We're also going to be installing some down pipes in the car. That's right, it's time to throw on some down pipes. That's what we're installing. Let's get right into ripping off that front bumper to put these intake ducts on. Now that we got the bumper off, it is time to remove the factory intake ducting. So we're taking off those factory intake ducts, which will make room for us to install the new ducts. Hey guys, up here in the corner. Yeah, it's me. Alrighty guys, so you can see the difference between these new ducks and the old ones. These new ones are a heck of a lot bigger than the old ones as you can clearly see from looking at them and honestly pulling the bumper is not that hard. We got those intake ducts installed. They look really good. My favorite feature about them is the fact that they glow in the dark. Yeah, they look really good and they're super easy to install. Man, those intake ducts, super simple. Pull the bumper off, put the intake ducts on, bumper back on and done. Just a bunch of clips and bolts, no big deal. What I've learned from working on cars is this actually bumpers are always super intimidating, but actually they're not that bad to install. The neat thing about these intakes though, they glow in the dark. Um, yeah, as you guys can see in that clip when I like turn the lights off, you can kind of see them glowing in the dark. So at night you'll have like this little ominous green bowl things behind the grill, which will look super neat. And it just, it adds a little bit of character to the car but now it is time to go ahead and install those downpipes. First thing we need to do in order to install the downpipes is we need to remove the lower half of the exhaust, giving us more room to get the downpipes out through the bottom of the vehicle. Oh, 
tons. Doing the easy stuff? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the easiest, but it is the office. All right, so you guys can see the little space there is right in front of me for the downpipe on both the passenger side and on the driver's side. There is almost no room to get to these bolts, but we're gonna try to get them out anyways. Guys, can car companies just give us some space to work on cars? Okay, I'm not even sure where to begin right now. So the next part of this job is we need to get the downpipe bolts off. Trouble is on this Kia, there is no room anywhere to get to these bolts. I am trying my hardest to get access by removing parts around the engine to try and get to the bolts when disaster happens. We get room to the bolts and one of the nuts gets stuck on the stud that is in the back of the turbo and breaks the stud off. Turns out this is not super uncommon and one of the tricks is to use a very powerful air gun when removing these downpipes, which of course in my shop, I don't have at home. I have hand tools and a couple power tools. No air stuff because I don't have an air compressor yet. So this is where things kind of started to go completely wrong. Well, that went a lot worse than expected. Uh, I guess you could call it a total failure on my part for you know, what happened. We got the intakes on, no big deal. Those were super easy to do. However, those downpipes, we broke one bolt, we had to give up, put everything back together and the car needed to leave. We needed to rethink our a plan of attack moving forward in order to finish this car and get these downpipes installed. That plan is to take the car to my work and install the downpipes. I have a lift, I have air tools, I have things that I can use to fix the broken stud, all the things that we need in order to get this thing finished with those downpipes and get him back on the road. Unfortunately, this is not the end of the bad news for that, but you're going to have to stay tuned for the next video to find out more. One big change that I'm happy to introduce to the channel is this green screen behind me, because now I can shoot videos from my desk and I don't have to go to the shop every time I want to add something to a video to improve it. So if I forget to talk during a scene or something, I can do it all from right here. This opens up new windows opportunity for some really cool content that I'd love to bring you guys from right here at my desk. So let me know what you guys think about this green screen idea. Let me know if it worked in the video for you guys, but that is going to do it for today. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. As always, if you like what you saw, don't forget to smash the like button and leave me some comments and thoughts down below and subscribe so you guys don't miss any future Fix It Garage videos. You're going to want to see this series to the end because it does have a happy ending, but we've got a long road to get there. Thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.